Hello everybody, and this is me, Annie the Enigma, here to make another video. This time, I'm going to have some company. So, now you, why'd you go, sweetie? Aren't we busy reading? We agreed. I know we agreed, but I just didn't think you'd do it at this time. Thought you were going to wait until later. I know, but now. Now. I know. Now. I know. Now. Oh, man, so it really was Annie. Me? No. Annie in Attack on Titan. Spoilers. I'm reading Attack on Titan. Hello, Lena. Okay. Let me see what we're up to. Oh, yes, explain the first image, by the way. While I get ready. Well, drink it. Oh, yeah, it's my morning juice. <laughs> Didn't think I wouldn't notice now, did you? Mm-hmm. I live with schizophrenia, and she lives in my head with me. So, we're going to be talking about the image called the Ram, or the Ram's Domain. And, to be honest, this kind of will come off as a bit... There's a reason why I have Nalia here with me. She helps keep me sane. Yep, logic with emotion. Anyways, the first image that you saw was actually the one I did without having to draw on paper. There's a reason why I actually do most of my images by a paper before I actually go onto a computer now. Because I actually feel a lot more comfortable sketching out an image completely on paper before actually putting them onto computer this was my first attempt to try it on a tablet before my tablet decided to just screw with me and delete the entire process when I was about... How far was I done with the image? You were about 30%. 30% done with it before my tablet decided to reset my account and I lost any and all progress not only on this image but a good number of other images. So, it took me a few months before I decided to go back to the image and try and redraw it from scratch. And I have to admit that the newer image is a lot cleaner and better looking so far as you're definitely seeing. I readjusted a lot of things and had to redo a lot of the work, but overall if you compare the two images just with what I could save. You're definitely telling that there's a lot of difference between my skill on drawing on computer to skill on drawing on paper, as I am far more handier on paper than I am on computer. It takes a lot to actually do it on computer and being comfortable on that area. But since I do have difficulty talking about the RAM, let's instead do some questions! Hey, Annie, ever thought that people can't tell the difference between us? Yeah, I know. I don't give a cred. Also, shout out to Sparkling Aria who subscribed to our YouTube channel. We happen to have a DeviantArt. Imgur, no, not Imgur. What's that site called? Instagram. Instagram. And Facebook. Yeah, but we don't often post on Facebook. We just use Facebook for other reasons. True. Okay. But, instead of just me answering these questions, I'm gonna have her answer these questions. I don't technically exist. Yes, but you do technically have a personality all your own with emotions and everything else that would classify you as having a soul. It kind of makes one question, what is the technicalities of what a person is as a whole when 
not even humans themselves know what makes a person a person if as a whole we don't even have technically free will you do have free will but then again so do you explain we both emote we both have feelings we both have independent thoughts and in and independent actions of our own after all you sometimes do possess me from time to time to help prevent me from doing things like when you run across the road yes exactly and you act like an idiot almost getting yourself killed time and again yes exactly your point you exist just on equally a real life level as i do except you're not furry does that have to really matter? At the end of the day, you do technically have a real life persona to the same extent that I do. What technically accounts for a soul if you have the exact same amount of feelings and other things that I do? And you can possess the body to the same degree that I do. You're trying to just convince me that I exist it does work to some extent. Just get to the questions and I'll answer them. Does your name have a meaning and what is it? We already answered this on our ask.com, but uh, I decided that we should expand upon it considering both our names do have meanings. Mine has a Christian backstory which relates to my full-on name it technically means a virgin of some sort but hey i'm not like mary i didn't give a virgin birth yeah but technically it means you're pure and innocent yeah except i don't know the entire story with my full name that's that's the thing but i'm not gonna let let it loose here there's a reason why i don't even go by my full name you want to know why because if I'm ever in danger and you try to call out my full name, it is annoying to hear it. That's why calling me Annie is so much simpler, shorter, and better. Besides, who wants to go getting called my full name anyway? Annie is short, sweet, and to the point. And besides, there is a Broadway musical named Annie. Back then, I loved the name because of it. Again, short, sweet, and to the point. Your name, however, that's a different story now, isn't it? Nayu Shaul Semenova is my name. Each word has their own story. Nayu comes from a folk tale on my planet that technically... Oh, how does the story go? Ah, yes. Once upon a time, there was a terrible king whom other people ordered an assassination of but when the assassinator or slash thief eventually killed the king he was almost caught in the act but managed to disguise himself as the king just in time during his short time as the king he managed to change a few things up that the despicable king would never do before anyone knew it the assassinator slash thief managed to get away in the dark of the night when people found out that the king had been dead the entire time they all but wanted the assassinator back as their king but he was never found i like this story but there's only one part of it i don't like the fact that the assassinator managed to play as the king all while a dead rotting corpse was in the closet it really brings new meaning to the skeletons in the closet pun. Then there's Shaul, which I... Uh, everyone knows why I'm called that. It's a, it's tradition to call a kid a middle name after their father or mother in my family. And then there's Simonova, which has another story behind it. And it's an epic story. The entire family 
was named after a supernova in the sky. Actually, it's technically the biggest one in our solar system. But continuing, let's talk about the, uh, you know, talk about the image, Annie. Let's see. No, we're not to the point that I had to erase the layers yet, but I will admit what you're seeing on screen now is what I had to work with on trying to fix the on starting layers of the lava river, her, her crown, her outfit, the chains, and basically the ground level of most of of just most of the background and such. However, I had to change up the crown as too much was going on and even even Bugsy pointed it out. What was her crown? Her crown had, let's see, what did I have the crown with? The crown had tentacles, metallic things going in on it, thorns, jewels, and last of all, an actual hand clutching what should be her heart with an eyeball in it. In the later images, you're going to see that this actually gets cleaned up and simplified so that it more represents her as a whole than anything else. And I think I fixed the horn problem because the horns were uneven at the start of this. So I helped. So I had to relocate one of her horns using using a special tool in Photoshop so that they were more aligned. I know she looks a bit, the entire image is tilted. That's supposed to be the way it is because she's not supposed to be in our third dimension by any means. In fact, later on you're going to see the starting of what is going to be the string of fate, which is red, that she has along with the hands. As well as a few other tidbits of how the lava is starting to boil and go roll along. Next is, okay, okay. Next question. Who would you cast you to play you in a movie? That's who would you cast you to play in a movie? Stop being such a grammar Nazi. Hey, I'm just gonna correct some junk. Well, I'm sorry. Seriously, go take a drink, girl. Hey, I know you care about my health, but dang. Okay, I'm the one who normally switches my accents around, but you just switched yours. I'd like my accents back. And I'm not the stereotype here. You are. Right, right, right. But, uh, seriously, who would you play you in a movie? Can you excuse me for a moment? Uh, why? Excuse me? Excuse me? Now, what was the question again? Who so would you play you in the movie? And what did you just do? Oh, just nails in a coffin if you catch my drift. You just... Wait, did you just seal up Sylvina's coffin? What? She would definitely come out saying Sigourney Weaver would definitely play me. But no, 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 no. no. Angelina Jolie. To play me. Now you, did you forget as a human you're what? You think Angelina Jolie can't play me? No, it's just as a human woman you're not exactly, not exactly what? You really, what, what, what? What's wrong? Can, can I offer a suggestion then? 
Stop her suggestion to what? What's wrong? Angelina Jolie is the best. She's the best there ever was. The best there ever is. I'd say she's even the queen here. Have you seen how badass she can be? Have you heard of Zoe Saldana? Like, Zoe Saldana is good. I mean, she's even great. I'm sorry, who? Okay, we've watched Star Trek. And we have Avatar. What did she play in Avatar, then? You know, the love interest of the main character? Oh, yeah, she had some freaking skills in that one. I'll consider her, but I am definitely going for Angelina Jolie. You know, Angelina Jolie definitely has the death, the chops, the buffs, the ass, all the skills you could ever want in a damn role model, with all the freaking charm included. Um, but she, but she's what? Um, wait, 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 I got it. Angelina Jolie has already played a Tiger Woman. Well, that only makes her more qualified then. No! That's not it! You know what? I'm gonna drop it. I'm not gonna play this card. I'm not gonna go there! I'm... Are you trying to imply something on me? Because you're clearly anxious, nervous, maybe even a little skittish here. What are you trying to imply Angelina Jolie is not capable of? It's not that she's not capable, Annie. Seriously, what's her problem? No, 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 no. It's not that she's not capable. It's that she's not. She's not. She's not. When she, when you're human, you're not. Saldana would be better. Well, who would you play you in a movie? Miss PC, maybe? Because I can tell who you're trying to appeal to. I just say the one who can do the best job can get the job. And Angelina Jolie, the best role model and queen of Hollywood, gets the job. I don't know who could blame me, to be honest. Seriously, I don't think anyone could be as crazy as I can be. Really? Well, then, might have I throw a bone out for you, princess? What? Emma Watson. No, 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 We are not throwing Emma Watson on here. Yeah, we are. I mean, Emma Watson could play a crazy person and also a sane person at the same per at the same time. I think Emma Watson can do dual types even. But have you seen her size? Oh, you're just complaining because you once had a dream where you turned into Emma Watson for Beauty and the Beast. And you felt her junk. Yep. Yep. Come on, princess, it's okay. I'm not going there again. Oh, come on. Grow up. She's the best one to play you. She can be just as crazy, too. And don't deny you liked her playing as Hermione and Harry Potter. Yeah. She played a good Hermione. So, let's talk more about the, the images. Alright, alright. By the way, shout out to Sparkling Aria, because we do know that you subscribe, but we do advise that you don't watch too much farther, because again, this is PC-13. Where are we now? We're to the point where I am actually erasing some of the layers, because the layers got a bit too intense. 
Um, or actually, I misplaced some of the layers in the wrong place in Photoshop and had to erase some of them in order to actually clean place new backgrounds where I should. I had to add more layers into Photoshop and in order to make those layers work, I had to start erasing certain parts. I was not intent on erasing one of the two mountains I had already made. And because of that, I, I wound it up having to really work around the erase the eraser to try and make sure that worked as well as it did. As you can tell, some of the lines actually show where the red strings are supposed to show up. And there's some design work actually showing within her string of fate. As you're going to see later, that design choice is because her red strings can alter time and fate, as I've actually described the ram or the string of fate, fates themselves, they can alter time, abilities, and people in general on a whole and on a whim, just in general. And that's why the DNA print is on them to the degree that they are. And some of them include some goop like, in some goop in them because it's supposed to corrupt people. Very soon now, you're going to see how I altered even the ram's crown and some of the beginning background sketches for how the background would start to show up. As I'll mention right now before we enter our next question that was asked of us that we picked, um, two of the characters will look suspiciously like my importies, but as I've described multiple times on the blogs, that I've written about this, they are not the Importies. The Ram never owned Importies. In fact, the only two Importies she did have were actually Importie 1 and 2. The others were just coincidences that they look similar, and they contain souls that are completely irrelevant. They could have similar personalities to characters within 561, but they are not the same characters within, if that makes sense. Also, I had to literally take breaks between drawing this certain scenes because of the fact that I was drawing some legitimate gore, and I didn't like doing that. Also, you'll later on see the WEGs, which are a culminate, which are actually a product of a riddle that I've been asking myself and others online for some time. What walks with wings and flies with its legs? And believe it or not, no one seems to have a proper answer to this. Because it came from a dream I once had a, as a little girl where I had to ride a, an invisible bicycle in order to fly. And it got me to thinking heavily about a riddle where, about making up a riddle based around that concept. Where if you fly with your legs, what do you walk with in order to stay on the ground? And I realized, wings. You, you walk with your wings instead of your legs because your legs are now used for flying instead of walking but then would anybody else create a creature based on that very unique concept and to my knowledge no one has ever done that it's creativity of it at its finest in my opinion but i know no one else can ever think of such a thing at least as far as I've seen. Now for the next question, which could be our last one. Oh wait, no, I've still got two more. What is something you have always wanted to try but have been too scared to? Oh, I think we both have an answer to this. I would love to jump off a cliff to try and fly. 
Yes, I am delusional enough to do this. I sometimes believe I have the ability to fly. I know I don't. Stay calm, everybody. Stay calm. I will not jump off a cliff, especially as long as she is here. Yeah, I prevent her from doing a lot of stupid stuff. Anyways, I would love to jump off a cliff just for the sake of it. I do jump off of some ledges, but I know full well that I can handle the fall. But I don't know. It's just been something I've been thinking about. Not for the sake of suicide either. When I think of suicide, I think of something else because I've been suicidal. I don't know why I have that urge either way, and I've heard it's an actual phenomenon that happens. I actually keep thinking sometimes it would be fun to do it. And again, it's not about suicide. It's it's something honest to God weird. But again, I'm not sure if it's fear that keeps me from doing it, but she does keep me from doing it. You can't go jumping off a cliff. You don't have wings in real life. I know. I know. But what would you like to do if you had a chance in reality but be too scared to try? Everything. Everything? Everything. I live in your body, damn it. Do you think that's easy? Let's see. If I could, I'd ride a motorcycle. Oh, but I'd have to consider the fact that I live in your body and that prevents me from riding a motorcycle because you're dumb as shit and you can't even ride a motorcycle. Excuse me? You don't know how to ride a motorcycle. My point. I'm sorry. You're aggravated. I'm pissed as shit. I can't do anything. Because I have to think about who this body belongs to. Alright, alright. I am a conundrum. You say I have free will? No, I don't. No one I have to worry about who this body belongs to in the home. If I could... Without caring about your welfare in the process? Oh, man. What is the one thing I'd do, but I'd be too afraid to? About the only fear I have is worrying about your body in the process. Drinking. Yeah, drinking. <clears throat> you get drunk off the simplest sip, but I would love to take ten kegs of freaking beer. Just to help with what I deal with. But I can't. Because then you'd die. Okay. We just hit a depression. No, 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 no. You didn't hit a depression. I hit a depression. Can we please skip to the next question? All right. All right. All right, kitty. All right. What do you think of people in love with fictional characters? Oh, God. Why'd I write that one down? Oh, boy. Oh, God. Now we're back. Annie's been in love with a quote-unquote fictional character. Annie's been in love with Sonic. Unfortunately, I haven't. Even though technically I am fictional. Okay. Let's get one thing straight. You emote. You have feelings. I don't feel angry. I don't feel pissed. You feel aggravated. I'm just a little frustrated with you. That's all. I live in the same head with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll calm down. Jesus. Yeah. I think we both bicker like an old married couple, if anything else. Yeah, I know. I know. But damn it, I'd love to live every once in a while. Maybe one day go on to a nice, grueling, oh, so nice, bar fight. Oh, that would be so great. 
If only you could do that for your birthday party. But let's talk about fictional characters. Let's see. When you were in love with Sonic... God, did that annoy the shit out of me. Hey, I needed it. Now I know you needed it. But you don't want to know what it was like, how you, you know, did that. Oh, God, it was so annoying. I swear to God, hearing you two go at it night after night while I was trying to sleep is like, God, you two, keep it the fuck down. Ay. But then there are people who are legitimately in love with fictional characters, and it's not a hallucination. Thank God Sonic left. But then I wonder for people who don't have the fictional characters leave. How does that work? Not even I know. Not even I know. Okay, first of all, you're the girl with the schizophrenia. I'm technically a fictional character. I can't leave. I'm schizophrenia. I can't leave. And you're technically in love with me. How does it work for you? Think about it. Well, what I think about it is that there's a point where it can be healthy and there's a point where it can be unhealthy. There are people out there who legitimately can't find love. In today's culture, there are a lot of men who unfortunately can't find women because women have either too high a demands for the men to meet or too low a demands or are perhaps too picky for men in general. And then you've got men who are the same back to women. This leaves a significant amount of men and women without love interest for a good long while. Sometimes you've got to fill that void somehow. In any way you can. If anything, do what you can to make sure that feeling stays. Because it does help with some depression sometimes. But I'd say be careful with it. Because if it turns into an obsession rather than a healthy means of release, then you've got a problem that'll wind up blocking you from that release of actual love when it comes your way. Sometimes fictional characters can actually... Anyways... Anyways... Having a fictional character as a waifu or husband is healthy to a point. Just keep in mind that it's fictional and not real. Heck, there are even those that are autistic that will have no choice but to fall in love with someone. Well, not no choice, but, you know. They do think these characters are real. For me, it was healthy for me. To fall in love with someone I didn't think was right for me. Let me put it like this. I once went out with somebody whom I believed was the right man for me. Only for my hallucination, my schizophrenia for example, to come up with a fictional character known as Sonic the Hedgehog to come in and show me he wasn't the right kind of guy for me. What I needed in life was a man like Sonic. And sure, Sonic didn't have all the personality traits that he needed, that he had, but he did have something that I needed. Everyone's... 
I'm going to admit, when Sonic left, I went to go find a man with the same traits as Sonic. And I did find someone like that. But they had to literally be careful about it. I didn't want just anyone. And that's why I go with Bugsy. Bugsy managed to win Nayu's heart first, then mine. Because it was still delusional in the fact that maybe Sonic was real enough that he would come back. But nowadays I know otherwise. He was just a fictional character, and so is Nayu to some extent, but she's real enough to at least garter enough realness to be her own self. That's why when Nayu keeps saying she's not real, I want to get her out of that, because to some extent, Nayu is me. And the more she doesn't believe that she's real, the more I don't believe I'm not real. I think other people that are in love with fictional characters are merely looking for people with similar traits as those fictional characters, no matter how outlandish they seem to be. They're just looking for a little love. And yes, that may seem a bit wrong and weird in the, in the oddest way, but considering my experience in the field, it wouldn't be too far-fetched. Some people have... aren't like other people. Consider autistic people who do have legitimate disabilities. They aren't going to find love as naturally as other people will. Chris Chan Wessler isn't going to find love as normally as other people, and... There's even someone who's in love with a Reshiram. These people are just trying to find love. You know? And we shouldn't fault them for it. They just have a different way of finding love. Who knows? You know? We all have our different kinks, too. There's a furry community where people love furries. And I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like Nayu the way she is because she's furry. Even if she has no hair. Hey, I was born like this. And besides, I don't like having human hair. It disturbs me. And this, and another thing, I like Nayu's attitude. But she still needs to work on that self-confidence of hers. There's a reason I have low confidence. I know. Okay then, so... Yeah. People who are in love with, with fictional characters... have problems sometimes. But other times they're just trying to find some love. We all have issues trying to find love in one way or another. And that's not wrong. Okay, then you want to talk about your little Easter egg now? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. I legitimately had a dream that was a nightmare fuel dream that the ram came to my house looking like a certain person I'm trying to keep out of my life presently so that I can stay happy or... At least, you know. Anyways. And she said, I want you. All while demonic eyes were on her. This version of the ram I wound up being terrified of as it reminded me disturbingly of a night I had met over, okay, over a year ago. And that's the reason why I needed Nayu. Because that night was very terrifying to me. Okay, maybe not terrifying in the sense everyone would identify as terrifying, as I can't quite associate with the emotion of fear. I feel fear. I can 
understand fear, but when it comes to comprehending fear as a whole, when I'm not feeling fear, I don't quite understand what it is. And I think that's because of my autism that I don't quite grasp it. So that's why I have Nayu here. She knows what fear is. She's the part of my psyche that understands fear. Annie is legitimately afraid of the ram, if not terrified by it. And after a certain event, sometime last year, she became desperately frightened by this character, which is why she's drawn so demonically. There are points when Annie does lose all hope in life to the point that she does feel like giving in to this character. But it's absolute hopelessness that she's afraid of. The Ram is a character that literally feeds off her fear to the point that Annie doesn't know who she is anymore. And that's something Annie no longer wants to have anymore. She wants to be who she wants to be. Not who she is, who she has been forced to be. And the Ram exemplifies someone who she's been forced to turn into. Essentially, the ram is an embodiment of her insanity. Insanity and chaos. Something she doesn't want to become, but has to turn into in order to keep safe. And yet, all the same, doesn't want to be. And she's afraid of it. I would say she needs to confront such a fear, but at the end of the day, one can't help but be afraid of something they don't want to be. But yet all the same are becoming. <sighs> That's why the, there's an image of her in the background. Because she doesn't want to accept being this. And the dream where the ram tries to come for her is probably a representation of everything she's been put through again because of Annie's mere denial of trying to stand her ground on things. Right? Yeah. It's okay to say no to me. It's okay. Anyways. Any other questions? Anything else about this image we can talk about? About to come up is the background image works. Where I actually work on a lot of the layers and how they actually are cleaned up. You're going to see a lot of the stalagmites, stalactites, the shading, and yes, the mountainous areas that I actually start working on. It took me some time to get them all to function where, well with Photoshop, and I had to use a lot of brush effects to make them work to the way they did. Yes, I hate the RAM, but I still made her a compelling backstory as to why she created what she did with Hell's Sanctuary. And with that, I think we can end this with perhaps anything else. Well, what other story, what other things about the ramp have you ever, anything else? No. All right. No. No, it is then. Well, how about the stories? For those who pay attention to my blogs, I'd actually like to make it clear that I do not like the censorship I've been seeing a lot in YouTube and other places. I recently heard that Gab not only got censored, but 
barely managed to get back up. And lately, I'm not liking how far censorship is going in today's world. If I had to be honest, this censorship that we're trying to promote in today's world is starting to get real disturbing for a lot of reasons. Number one, people are not only getting deplatformed, they're getting scared to the point of not showing up to work, among other things. I just recently heard how this man, uh, what's his name? I can't remember it. Carl, uh, Carl something, had his house almost ransacked by a bunch of people who literally threatened him, we know where you live and we know where you sleep at night. And I'm like, that is a legitimate threat. That is a legitimate threat. And the guy did not return to work. His wife had to call the cops and someone on Twitter literally said he did not sympathize with the guy's wife. And I'm like, the freak. You know, Annie, I seem to remember a time when this was exemplified to the point that people fought each other. Brother and sister fighting. Mother and father and son forced to literally go to war. It was an ugly battle. And you want to know what's worse? It was all done because someone wanted it to happen. They didn't care about people on the bottom. They only cared about themselves. But I don't think you should actually, you know, get involved too much. I know. I hate the censorship though. I hate how far people go to cut anybody off just because they said something no one liked or someone didn't like. And they're willing to cry anything to get them to shut up. And it just bothered me. So much. It almost makes me wonder if, at the end of the day, do we even care about each other enough to try and stop this before it gets worse? But I don't think we do. I don't think we care enough to try and stop this before it gets worse. And I'm not saying there aren't those that do. We have people who are trying to care about each other. I recently heard how a man from the UK had his entire life ruined by, I think, Antifa. Stopping him from coming to America to marry his fiance, who also had her life ruined. Now, don't take my word for this. You can go look it up. I, I don't have the videos. But the guy has been trying for two years to get back into America. And his life was ruined by Antifa. And I couldn't help but feel incredibly sorry because this guy has been trying left and right to get back into America to marry this woman. And I, I feel sorry for him. I'm very empathetic. I feel sorry. But I also feel sorry for those who just buy into the narrative just without caring about, well, they, they buy into the narrative because I know what it's like to buy into a cult-like mindset to the point that you don't wind up caring about those that are unlike you. I try to write about it all the time, you know, morality. 
What happens if you're put up against someone who does not at all condone what you condone? Will not at all condone what you bring to the table? What do you do if talking to them does not bring the solution and they're going to fight you to the death for it? What do you do then when conversations are not going to bring good things? What do you do then? If there's something I actually applaud my boyfriend for doing in his story is that I like Steven Universe, but in my boyfriend's current story, he says he's going to put Steven to a no-win scenario where no amount of talking will advocate, you know, a actual solution. You can't redeem the person. Here's what I believe. And hear me out on this. I believe in diversity. Not only diversity of people, but diversity of thought to the point that what you believe in, if you believe in freedom of speech or freedom of speech or, no, 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 freedom of that you can win anything by just talking it out, by just sharing your feelings and everything else. If you feel like that's what it takes to save the day. That you don't have to fight or beat someone up to actually win the day. That you don't have to do that. For your thought and opinion, there is an equal and complete opposite person who is willing to advocate the exact identical opposite to you to the point that your life will be put in danger. And no amount of talking friendly conversation, or even light battles will stop this person from trying to kill you. What do you do then? Do you still stick to your guns or do you try a new route? Do you get someone else to do your dirty work or do you stick to your morality? I have morality issues like this all the time in my stories. Because I fully believe in the diversity of thought just as much as the diversity of people. And it's such stories like this that will bring diversity of stories within a conclusive pantheon of the world. I fully believe in that. It makes one question what is the moral thing to do? What is the just thing to do? What is the right thing to do when that is the only option? What can you do in such a situation when you're put to the test? Do you go that distance? Do you, do you actually do what you always do, even if it's going to prove pointless at the end? Even if it's going to cost you your life? And perhaps the lives of everyone you held dear? Or do you start with a new strategy or something else? It really makes one question, what is the right thing to do at the end of the day? I ask questions like this because ever since seven years ago, I found that the greatest gift that hedgehog ever gave me was the freedom of thought. And that freedom of thought I will always apply anywhere and any place.